guys, my name is Noah Zavallis. I'm a right-handed pitcher in the Seattle Mariners organization. I'm here with Wet Pros Wear to talk you through a baseball glove relays. This is the finished product right here. I got into gloves and, and uh, fixing gloves years and years ago when one of my web laces broke and I had to fix it before a game. I took it to a, uh, an old time kind of cobbler shop and they were able to uh, show me exactly how it was done. I watched and, and from there it really just blossomed. I started taking apart gloves um, at any chance I could get and here we are today uh, with a full relace. So this is a Rawlings two-piece closed web, very standard pitcher's model. During this video and following videos, you will see how each piece comes together from the web to the fingers here, uh, to the more interior bits, thumb, pinky, and then of course, the uh, kind of the back part of the glove, the heel and the palm place. So the first thing you want to do when relacing a glove um, is kind of identify first if it's uh, a brand new glove and you won't have any broken laces, but more often than not you're just fixing a glove, so you'll find the broken lace. Um, and if you're not comfortable taking the lace out all at once, a really great technique to use is just take one lace out um, in, its, uh, in its entirety. So I'll give an example of that, uh, for instance I'm right here on the thumb, this is one of the easier ones and uh, a nice one to start with. And use your needle nose pliers to just pull the knot. Flip it around. And in doing this, you kind of start to learn the different lace techniques, little um, the tips and tricks and the patterns of how a glove goes together. Now this thumb style with the three holes right here means there's a hidden loop right here on the inside. So we'll leave that be for the next, tour, next part. So I've taken apart the rest of the glove exception of the palm lace and unlacing and then relacing a glove is a little bit like a puzzle in that you have to do uh, certain steps before other ones. So to access the palm lace you take apart the wrist and then remove the rolled lace here on the, on the heel. Now to get to this lace what you're going to do is flip over and find the start. This is usually buried between the pinky and the ring fingers. The easiest way is to just clip it find this and start pulling. Now this lace disappears and then comes back out. So what you want to do is flip inside the glove and find each of these and snip those. This will make your job a lot easier. Once you snip on the palm side, taking care to get every single one especially the one hidden right here on the thumb. You can then flip over and start pulling these. Now the true hinge of the glove is very easy. That's just got a flat right there. And if you snip again on the palm, this will pop out. One and two. The ones on the pinky are usually buried underneath the pinky liner that you can kind of see right in there and use the same process. Just snip. Make sure you get it all the way. And once that's snipped, come back and pull out the flats. These will be a little bit difficult to see and often one is buried deep down there 
and so you're gonna have to work a little bit. Sometimes it's easier just to use your needle nose, get under it, and pull it out this way. So now you have a clean palm. This lace comes out here. And this is the last one. It's very tricky because it's buried deep into the thumb. You have to separate the interior lining from the palm lining, find this um, fabric pad, and you can see it's buried deep down in there. You've got a flat right here. And I find the easiest way is to just try and snake your pliers underneath and pull the whole lace out. start when you're relacing a glove from scratch is this palm lace. It starts here, traces the palm all the way up uh, right towards the, the crook of the thumb. And the way you're going to start lacing is tie your knot on the end. You don't have to leave a whole lot hanging off because this is just going to be tucked in between the fingers here. Try and keep the flat sides of the lace out. Pull it tight. Let me slide down all the way to the other end, and you can prepare your nib. You're going to want to cut it at a slight angle so that when you take your easy lock lace uh, guide, you can thread it into the end so that it's tight and snug in there so that it won't pull out. It's also important to note this lace has been skived, which means it's a little bit thinner than your average lace. And this is very important because when you're lacing both the palm and the heel, a thinner lace will reduce the break-in time um, and create a more natural closing feel on the glove. So to start the palm lace, you're going to find the hole right here in between the two fingers. Stick your needle in here and come out. right in the crook of the pinky. So now you're transitioning from the shell of the glove to the palm of the glove. And you'll pull it all the way through so that you have your lace hanging out here. Now, you want to orient your lace so that the flat side, the smooth side, is facing out. Trace your lace all the way back and essentially repeat the process. Go down and in here it gets a little bit murky just because you have to go by feel. You can't open the glove far enough to get it uh, get a great view. What really helps is if you orient the lace before you pull it through so that the flat side is going to be facing out. You can then fish your needle through the palm and the wrist opening. Make sure your lace is oriented. And it looks like we're a little bit twisted here. But that's not a huge issue. Just flip it over. Now, once you pull it taut, you'll have your first loop right here. And to continue this pattern on down, you just again find your needle and find the appropriate hole right here in the palm, which looks like this one and you'll fish it back up to the palm again. So now that you've installed the palm lace on the glove, you've kind of put a backbone into your work. Um, and you can flip it over and see that the rough side of the lace should be in the palm, 
and the smooth side should be here on the palm lining shell area. Um, once you've put this lace in, you're going to want to see, make sure that your thumb um, and the pinky can still be accessed. Um, so the pinky we don't have to worry about because we don't need to get into the pinky stall. But for this thumb style, you are going to need to get into the thumb, thumb stall just like we did when we were taking the lace out. So this one is a little bit of a tough one to do. Uh, sometimes the best way to start is by going in and doing this loop first. Um, I often like to do the, the exterior one and then go back and hit the interior one. So what you'll do is you'll start right here in the top. You can leave this you know, three to four inches long depending on how long you like your laces and then pull it over, pin it down, and go back through the thumb. flat. That looks nice. And you flat on this side as well. Make sure your lace is oriented correctly. And it's easiest to just pull this up to expose the hole. And this is a, a little bit of a trick here. You go back through. And your needle pokes out on the other side. So while your needle is in, what you'll do is turn it slightly because what you want to have happen is a flat here and a flat here. So what's happened here is we've got a little bit of a twist. You can see a flat then exposing a rough. And the easiest way to do this is pull this down go and get your needle nose pliers and twist here to ensure that the flat stays facing out. Grab here, grab here, and pull that taut. So now that that one has been addressed, you'll go through here. And this is where we're going to address the hidden flat in the thumb stall. You're not going to go all the way through the glove into this one. Instead, you're going to peel these layers apart and see if you can see what you're, what you're attacking in there. It's going to be difficult to get the lace in and through, but we're going to try. And a lot of this will involve how, how well you can manipulate the glove. It'll be easier with older ones, but we're going to try it here with the new one. Use the heel of your hand to kind of drive the lace through in an awkward sort of fashion. But you can see the needle poking through. We're on the right track in this regard. And sometimes you need to use a little bit of extra force. So now that we've got the needle exposed, we can yank it through the glove. And now, the lace has not gone through the thumb. You can pull it. Make sure you've got a flat here. There are two aligned well. And you're not quite out of the woods yet because you then have to go back into the thumb stall and make sure that your lace gets through that next hole. So what we'll do here is set up the lace so that it orients correctly. Flip it over so you've got your rough side out. And go by feel in here to find that hole. And then poke it through this final thumb hole. So we draw this out. Make sure you're not caught around the thumb. Find out how your orientation works. Twist it as needed so that now you have the flat side exposed again. 
and then needle up and through the thumb. And what you will wind up with are three smooth faces of the lace. If you've done it correctly and this one got twisted. So just reorient and pull through. And now you have a thumb relaced. And what you'll do here is just simply cut the lace about even and tie a square knot. And the easiest way to do this is you go left over right, both with the smooth sides exposed, and tie your first knot, and then right over left. And you've got a nice square knot. So again, that's left over right, right over left. one you're not going to tie a knot on the end because the end will be secured by the roll in the heel lace. So what you start with um, is by going through this last pair of holes and pulling the lace almost all the way through. You're going to want to leave about an inch to two inches hanging out so that what you can do is connect the first two, sometimes three, um, holes by wrapping it around. So we'll start by taking your lace and going back through the holes you just made. And this will anchor the lace to that part of the glove. Here it's very important that you have it oriented correctly because uh, it's very difficult to correct a twist. So now clearly I don't have it go back and make sure the flat side faces out. Just by twisting the needle, you can ensure that the right side will come through and pull it tight. You want to make sure that this side goes in towards the wrist of the glove. And once that's tied down, your lace is secured to the glove. From here, it's just a repetitive stitch. You go all the way around. You're going to want to make sure that you connect into um, inner palm holes like these. These are sometimes missed. Um, and your next stitch just kind of starts the diagonal process. So we'll show you that. Again, you're just gonna go through the outer hole and the lace will poke in through the inner one and pull it tight. And you're just going to want to make sure that this piece lays down kind of on the inside of the binding. This is the glove binding. This is the shell proper. Um, you're going to want to try and keep this lace inside the binding. So that's tied tight. We'll just do one more to finish that off. Now here, you're kind of you're going to share a hole with this lace. You can see the needle poke out, come all the way through, and we'll pull it taut. Now we've got a little bit of a twist here, but we can iron that out relatively easily. Flip it over. And so now you've both secured this lace and begun to get into the wrist uh, wrist and, and heel palm of the glove. You go back again and secure the hinge. These can be a little bit tricky because you're sharing this hole and you want to make sure that the laces align nicely. But if you just ensure that the flat sides meet up, you should have no issues. And we'll just do one more stitch uh, to clear that hinge. And you will want to make sure that you catch this hole as well as this hole. So you're going to want to go through three layers of leather in this area. So we've got one, and then we'll dig down 
and connect in here and then through the third. establish the backbone of the glove. Uh, the heel lace, palm lace, the pinky, and the thumb laces have all been inserted. Uh, and from this point on, all you have to do is attach the web and then lace the fingers. And these are the two uh, laces that can vary between gloves. These laces are often uh, constant among almost every model of every pattern. So in this two-piece closed web, we'll start with the bottom. And this will be attached here. These can be kind of tricky because you're going to want to make sure that the flat side stays up both on the outside and on the inside of the glove. We'll start by aligning the holes. Make your first insertion. And here it's useful to leave more than you'd normally have. So this is probably about a four inch length of lace. Now we'll flip over, get the palm, and draw this through. And this will leave us a nice flat side showing on the palm of the glove. Pull both of these laces, make sure that's nice and snug. And so here we again have the flat side showing. Now what we'll do is we'll go back through that original hole, but we are going to want to make sure that the flat side stays out. So when we pull this through, hopefully what we'll wind up with is a flat side out, and then you're going to want to twist. And sometimes what you need to do with these is use your needle nose pliers just to kind of coax the lace back down that way. So this can be helpful just to kind of establish that twist. All right, so that looks nice. thread the needle. Sometimes this comes off, it's very easy just to thread it back in and you're ready to go again. Alright, now we have our middle of the three, so one, two, and then we're going to twist outside, make sure that flat side shows come back down and through. So you can see we've established our two flat sides on the outside. And then the last bit for this is just to finish it off. These can be kind of tricky just going up through, trying to find the, uh, the right path of the lace. But oftentimes, the needle will just guide you. All right, so we have our three. You can use your needle nose pliers to kind of adjust if you need to. These look all right. They're flat and snug flip over and now we have our two ends and we'll use the snips just to cut them at equal length. Now I like to leave this hanging loose just until I have the whole web on and that will dictate where the knots need to go, how tight they need to be and how much to leave on the end. Now to attach the second piece of the two piece 
closed web. And we're going to start with lacing the X's and these will take us up through the web and back down. So to begin you're going to start on the smaller portion, lace through the two middle holes and this is where you're going to leave your excess lace to tie the end knot. So we'll start there and give it a little twist just to open up that channel. And now if you look at how this is going to go together, you're going to start with uh, that first crossover. So you take the end of your lace and go through that last hole. And you can start going on the right or on the left. I just prefer the right. So now what you have is that first connection between the two pieces. And to lock that down, we'll then go through the thumb hole. So that's right here. And that'll take us to the inner shell. At this point, you can leave that X a little bit loose. The two peaks closed web is one that um, requires a little bit of different tensioning depending on where the web is connecting to the shell. So right here, you can leave it a little bit loose uh, just because it will be pulled tight at the end when you tie the knots. So then we'll twist and kind of establish a flat on the inner part. Go back through the shell. And right here, you're gonna wanna go through the same hole as this knot that you tied from the palm lace that goes up and through. So now it looks like we have a little bit of twist, just fix that. Everything looks good and you can pull it tight. There's your first flat. You're going to want to make sure that this lace is kind of on the inside of that knot, easy enough. And now you go back through this initial hole, that, that sleeve on the small piece. You can see the X starting to take shape. This can be pulled tight. And now there's kind of a mess of holes on this bottom row. You're not going to take this one. Instead, you're going to go through this kind of middle right hole and out this second from left and that will establish your first X. All right, so you have one X done there, and then to complete this side, you're going to essentially get this lace to run up through and kind of cut across the larger piece. And that is done by taking your needle and fishing it through diagonally beneath the R so that you cross through these holes and eventually find your way up here. Now this turn right here gives a lot of people problems. It doesn't quite look clean. And what you're going to want to do is just kind of sneak up on it so that you don't um, kind of scrunch the web up together and oftentimes you just press it down. This does not have to be that tight. So if you just leave it, you know, appropriately tensioned but not too much. You get a nice turn there and then you just finish it out going through here. And here again the web will then attach to the actual shell. 
we'll go in through the thumb, find our way to the shell, the inner shell. You're going to want to make sure that the flat side stays up just to make sure your orientation is correct. And once you have that all set, you can pull that tight. So you should be able to see <clears throat> a little bit of this lace where the pieces connect to the shell, but not all that much. You don't want to leave a whole lot of daylight. You pull that nice and tight, and you'll turn around and come up to that very last hole in the end of the thumb. And go through that and on out of the shell. Now from here, this lace is going to form the cross piece. It'll go through the tip of the web. You want to twist just a little bit and use your needle to bring it all the way through. And here's where having a, a slightly longer needle, uh, these come in, in two or three different lengths and the longer one will allow you to just slip the needle all the way through and pull it out on the other side. And when you've done that, you've essentially done half of this web and the process repeats itself, coming down, snaking through this part of the web and then tracing your X down into here. You'll wind up crossing over, going through the shell again and coming back down and out the other side. Hey, 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 hey. Now that you have the web itself attached, time to do the finger lace and on many gloves the finger lace will uh, start in either the thumb or the pinky and trace its way all the way to the other side of the glove. I like to start in the thumb uh, because that transitions immediately to the rolled lace right here on the top of the web um, and that's easier to get the tension correct than if you were to have to do the fingers first. So the right way to start is you'll take your lace and tie just a ending knot, making sure that it's nice and tight, the flat side out, and then you will start on the outside of the thumb through the very edge hole and come into the shell. And here you want to make sure that the lace is again oriented so that the flat side faces out because that will set you up for a nice rolled lace. Now different gloves do this, um, this process differently, but on Rawlings gloves especially, you're going to start by just going underneath this first flap and into the first hole. So what that looks like is this, and you're going to have A loop formed between this lace coming in and connecting to the web. Now from here you're actually going to go up and over and then back through that hole. So what that looks like is into this hole and then out that same hole. So when you pull it tight you'll have set yourself up for the correct angle. So with that stitch complete, then you move on to the next hole. And that starts right there, and the process repeats itself. So we'll do a few more. This is a very simple stitch. You're just creating essentially a spiral on the top of the web. And again, you're going to want to make sure that the flat side always faces out. And these can be pulled relatively tightly. There's really no um, one tension that, that these need to be set at. So we'll just do one more, again, to show how this should come together. Viral.
lace at the top of the web, you're going to need to transition from lacing the web into lacing the fingers. And you're essentially going to repeat the same stitch you did here, um, taking care to go through, not all the way, but just the first layer in this, um, this web sleeve. So what that'll look like is you'll take this lace and go back through that hole. But once you insert the needle here, you're not going to go all the way back through and instead you're going to slide it diagonally through that sleeve. So right there you can see that you haven't gone all the way through the web and instead you'll just pull the lace gently through this bit such that you arrive with one final stitch on the web and can very neatly begin lacing the fingers. And the way that works is by starting in this top left hole and by going to the outside of the glove. And here's where you'll arrive at the one location where the rough side of the lace will face out. So once you've pulled that through, you have a nice little loop there. And that doesn't have to be very tight, you can leave that just so there's a little play between the web and the fingers. Now you come to the backs of the fingers, the fingertips. So right here, this flat side will stay up. And the fingers are relatively easy to lace, um, and you can tension them differently depending on how the wearer of the glove likes them. For this one, I'll leave uh, a relatively loose tension, but they can certainly be even looser or much tighter. The fingertip backs are pulled taut, that sits snugly, and then you, fr you, cut, you begin to create your X's on the fingers. So from the top right, you'll go to the bottom left. And that will look something like this. And from there, you'll, kind of, you'll come out into that hole, and pull the lace through, Looks like we've got a little bit of a bind there. So once you orient it correctly, again the flat side should always face out on the fingers, uh, or on, at least on the inside of the fingers. So there we go. Now we can pull that to whatever tension you really want. That's the first part of the X. You're going to flip over, and these two holes will meet make sure that the lace is flat side out here and you'll come from the outside of the shell into the bottom right hole of that square that box you can see that that pulls in nicely so that you have your connector piece there and from the bottom right you're then going to go back to the top left so you'll establish your first X So now that's complete and we'll move on to lacing this finger to this finger. We'll do one more just to show the process. So again, orient the lace the correct way. In this case, it's rough side out. You'll start in through the top right hole. Pull your lace and go into the bottom left. Find that bit on the outside, pull it through, lace the fingers, in this case just so that they, they touch, don't, they don't have to be squished together. We'll go through that next hole, back to the bottom right hole, make sure that pulls in nicely, it does, and then you go and start in lacing the ring finger to the pink. Now once you finish lacing your uh, web and your fingers, uh, you'll tie it off with a standard tie-off knot right here, taking care to keep the flat side out. And then you can turn your attention to the wrist closure. 
and I like to leave this for last just because I think that it gives me a lot more flexibility in terms of lacing other parts of the glove as well as addressing anything I might need to on the inside just to make sure that the tension all around is correct as well as the uh, feel of the hand. Once you're ready to do this, you will slip the, lay, uh, the, the closure underneath and traditionally you're going to use these two holes. Uh, this is the tighter setting, this, um, this pair of holes is the kind of factory standard tightness. And so what you'll do is you'll take a lace, um, ideally about two feet long, and you'll start with the flat side down, so facing underneath, and you'll slip the needle in between the two holes and draw it out. And you wanna leave um, about half and half, so that's fine. And then from here, you'll start to create the X that closes the wrist. So if we're starting on the top, we'll take our needle and go down to the bottom uh, right of this four hole pattern. So we'll start there in the bottom right and we'll draw that lace through. Now this gets a little bit tricky because you have to deal with holes that you can't necessarily see. Um, but from that hole, we're gonna try and keep that right on top of this hole. So we'll take this lace and push it through that hole. And in doing so, we'll then come down to that hole. So the way that works is on the shell of the glove, you'll use the bottom right hole of the four. You'll go from the bottom right to the bottom right hole of the four, create it here. <clears throat> and then through that hole, you'll take it to the bottom left. And when you pull this tight, that lace comes down and tightens up the wrist and make sure you don't have any tension there, or don't have any uh, uh, slack there. And then from here, you'll take this last um, edge of lace and slip it up again through the bottom left hole on the glove shell. And once you've done that, and everything looks good under there, you can give that one last little tug, and this side is all done. And what you'll do is you'll just essentially repeat the process on the other side of the glove, or rather the other side of the wrist closure. So you'll have to prepare your nib here, thread that in. And this is why it's a little bit easier if you leave yourself plenty of lace, because the more room to play with um, in, the, in the excess lace, the easier it will be to kind of maneuver the glove and get to those holes that you can't see. <clears throat> So again, we'll just repeat the process. This time we'll start into the top right hole. And this one's gonna be easier just to pull all the way through of its own accord. But leave a little bit out there. And then you'll find that hole, which will be the top left of the holes on the wrist strap itself. Go through that and to that final hole in the top left. And this is a little bit difficult to see, but again, you can see that little um, slip through where you go from the top right to the top left. And this will take a little bit of finagling with the glove, but you pull that all the way through, taking care that the lace is not, um, has not bound. And then finally, you're gonna take your lace and go up through that final empty hole <clears throat> and when all is said and done you can give that one last tug and that will tighten up. Now that you have these two laces you can cut them to whatever length. Uh, some people like them to be left untied um, but again you cut them to the same length and tie your square knot. So now that you've seen how a glove comes together I just want to give special thanks to What Pros Wear, to Rawlings for sending the glove, and to Brad at buyfastpitchgloves.com for being great with the lace. He and his shop are great for all things glove relace, all things glove conditioning. Uh, I've never had a bad experience with their lace. The quality is phenomenal. Uh, leave a comment or a question with anything about gloves and glove relacing. Uh, hope you enjoyed it.